Hello and welcome back to the next video on trigonometry. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about ratios and finally get to the whole purpose of trigonometry and why what we have learning is so important in real life applications. So here I'm giving you a right triangle with only two sides. Okay, let's say that I wanted to find tangent of the angle theta. So tangent, of course, is opposite over adjacent, so that would be 2 over 6, which would simplify to 1 over 3, okay? Now, let's say we wanted to double this triangle in size. So if you wanted to double a triangle but maintain its shape, you have to multiply all sides by 2. So notice here we're going to get a triangle that is double in size. Now, notice the angle theta has remained the same. If you remember, when we talked about angles, the rays used to create an angle, the length of the rays is not what determines the angle. It's just the distance between the two rays. Even though we doubled this triangle, yes, the sides may have gotten longer, but the angle has remained the same. Therefore, let's say if we wanted to find tangent of theta for the similar triangle, I would get 4 over 12. But if we simplify that, that would simplify to 1 over 3. Notice it's the same exact ratio because the angle has remained the same. Now, just to prove the point even further, what if we wanted to shrink the original rectangle in half? So, of course, we would create a similar rectangle with sides half in length. So that would shrink to something like this. This would be 3 and 1. Notice that the angle theta is still the same exact angle as the other two. So notice for the smaller right triangle, if we wanted to find tangent of theta, it would still be 1 over 3. This is why understanding ratios is so important, because notice that the size of the triangle does not matter. You will always obtain the same ratio with the same angle. So, what happens if we're trying to find sine of an angle that's maybe a little unconventional, unlike 30, 60, or 45, which we can use the special triangles to figure out? Let's say we wanted to find sine of 20 degrees. So how can we found, find out sine of 20 degrees? This is assuming that we have some right triangle with an angle 20. So whatever sine of 20 is, is going to be the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Now, sine of 20 is not a conventional angle. Therefore, you can use a calculator to find that answer out. So if you pull out a calculator and you go here and you type in sine of 20, you will notice on your calculators that they do have sine, cosine, and tangent. So depending on the calculator you use, some you have to type sine first, and then you could type in the angle. Some other calculators, you type in the angle first, and then you press sine. So if I were to type in sine of 20 degrees, and I press the sine button, I'm going to get an irrational solution. I'm going to get a solution that is approximately 0.342, and the answer continues like that. So what the calculator did there is tell us that if I knew what the two sides of this right triangle were, I would know that the ratio of those two sides would be 0.342. So essentially, if you wanted to treat this as a ratio, you can say that this is basically 0.342, 
over 1. So essentially, you could say here that the opposite side is 0 0.342, and the hypotenuse is 1. So every right triangle has a ratio of two sides, and a calculator can actually calculate that for you. Now, you need to be careful, though, because calculators also have the radian setting. So if I wanted to do sine of 20 radians, that's going to be a completely different angle than 20 degrees. If you remember, one full revolution is 2 pi radians, which is a, pro a little bit more than 6 radians. So 20 radians is a very, very large angle. So if you wanted to si find sine of 20 radians on a calculator, you have to make sure that your calculator is set to radians. So I would suggest that you learn how to use your calculator and convert between the two units. Pause this video and try to solve these trig functions on a calculator. This is practice for yourself to see if you can figure out how to use the calculator. If you are still struggling to figure it out, read the manual for your calculator or find an online calculator that allows you to figure these out. Pause this video and I will show the answers in a few seconds once you press play. There you have it. These are the answers that you were able to figure out on a calculator. Notice for the last trig function, I put one radian. So if you did not set your calculator to radians, it would have read the question as tangent of one degree, which as we've seen before is not the same as one radian. They are two different angles. So be careful about the unit you're using when you have a calculator. Let's say that you're standing at a balcony and you're looking straight out. This is called your line of sight. Okay. Let's say that you see a bird flying above and you're going to look up at that bird. The angle of you looking up to the bird and your line of sight is called the angle of elevation. Now, let's say on the ground you saw a dog running. Okay, and then you're going to look down at the dog. So the angle of you looking down and the line of sight, this is called an angle of depression. Just some vocabulary words for you to keep in mind when working with problems. Okay, so let's say, for example, that you're on the ground looking up at a tree. You are 50 feet away from the tree, and your angle of elevation, meaning the angle from the ground to the top of the tree from where you are, is 32 degrees. How can we figure out the height of the tree? Okay, well, let's take a look at the information we have here. Can you see the right triangle that has shown up? Notice how we have the angle 32. The height of the tree is the opposite side. The 50 feet is the adjacent side. The distance from where you are to the top of the tree is the hypotenuse. Okay. Notice that there's a right triangle right there. So this allows us to bring into use right triangle trigonometry. Okay. So, looking at the information we have, we can actually figure out what is 
tangent of 32 degrees. Well, looking at this right triangle, tangent of 32 degrees has to be h over 50. Correct? Where h is the height of the tree. However, on a calculator, we can determine what tangent of 32 is. Remember, all that tangent of 32 degrees is, is if we had any right triangle with an angle of 32 degrees, tangent of 32 would tell us the ratio of the opposite to the adjacent side. And we can actually calculate this on a calculator. Now, the thing is that in the situation given, we have a right triangle with 32 degrees. So the ratio of tangent 32 has to be the same ratio as h over 50. So what does h have to be to maintain that ratio? Well, if we use a calculator, again, let's set it to degrees. If we find tangent of 32, we're going to get 0 0.6245. Let's say this is the ratio that a right triangle of 32 degrees has to have of opposite over adjacent side. That ratio has to be true for any right triangle with angle 32 degrees, including this right triangle, which H over 50 has to satisfy. So what does H have to be for this ratio to hold? Well, now we can solve for H. So h is equal to 50 times 0 0.6249, which is equal to 31.24 feet in this case, because h, of course, is um, the height in feet. So we, again, this is an approximate because the calculator is giving us an irrational number, but Using trigonometry and using our understanding of ratios, we were able to understand that h has to be 31.24 approximately, so that tangent of 32, or 31.24 over 50, has to be the same ratio for any right triangle with angle 32 degrees. Now let's take a look at this problem here. Let's say that a ship is sailing towards a lighthouse. The lighthouse is shining a light down at the ship with an angle of depression of 50 degrees. If the lighthouse is 24 yards tall, how far away is the ship from the lighthouse? So, can you see the right triangle shown here in the picture? This here is the right triangle that I'm talking about, right there. Notice a right angle right there. Now, when we say angle of depression, remember that we're talking about the angle downwards from the line of sight, which I showed there as a dotted line. So an angle of depression is actually always going to be on the outside of the right triangle, so the actual angle that we're going to be working with is this one right here, which is the complementary angle to 50 degrees, which is 40 degrees. So now we have a right triangle with an angle of 40 degrees. Of course, alternatively, for those who, who enjoy geometry, you could have also called this side 50 degrees, and you could have used that angle as well if you wanted to instead. At the end of the day, you will get the same answer regardless. So, looking at the right triangle, notice that the 24 yards, the height of the lighthouse, is the adjacent side to 40 degrees, and the distance from the ship to the lighthouse is the opposite side of the right triangle. So, with the information given, we can actually find out that tangent of 40 degrees is equal to d over 24. Now, of course, the hypotenuse has no purpose 
in this problem. Therefore, we don't use any other trig functions that involve the hypotenuse. Tangent is the most appropriate, or you can use cotangent as well. It is your choice. So, what this means is if we have a right triangle with an angle of 40 degrees, the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side can be calculated. Thankfully, with the calculator, we can determine that tangent of 40 degrees is 0 0.839. Now, since this is a right triangle with an angle of 40 degrees, the ratio of d over 24 has to be 0 0.839 as well. Therefore, we have to figure out what d needs to be in order for that ratio to hold. So, all we have to do is solve for d. And we're going to multiply 24 both sides to get the answer. And we get 20.139 yards. So this answer here, the distance, is an approximation. But it is the best approximation we can make. Therefore, 20.139 divided by 24, which is tangent of 40, is going to be approximately 0 0.839, as we saw on the calculator. Hopefully this has given you enough ideas of how to apply trigonometry to real-life applications where a right triangle appears. So, to wrap this video up, try to do this problem on your own. See if you can visualize the right triangle given by this problem. The cable from the top of a power line to the ground is 25 feet long, and the angle of elevation from the ground is 43 degrees. How tall is the power line? Notice the right triangle, and use the information given to see if you can figure out how tall the power line is using a calculator. Pause the video, attempt to do it on your own, and in a few seconds, I will describe the answer. So, I notice the right triangle right there. I am looking for the height of the power line. That is going to be the opposite side to 43 degrees. Now, notice with all the information given, I have the angle, I have the hypotenuse, and I'm looking for the opposite side. So that reminds me of sine. You can use cosecant if you want to as well, but it's easier to use the main three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, because those functions are readily available on your calculator. So I can set up the trig function that sine of 43 degrees has to be equal to h over 25. So I can find out what that ratio of opposite to hypotenuse side for any right triangle with angle 43 degrees using my calculator. So the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse sides of any right triangle with angle 43 degrees would be, using a calculator, 0 0.682. Approximately. I'm rounding this. So, of course, for this right triangle, the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse has to be that exact same ratio. So, I can solve for the height, h, that would make this ratio the same. Therefore, h would be 25 times 0 0.682, which would be... 17.05 feet, approximately. That would be how tall the power line is. With practice, these will start to make more sense. Remember, when you are given a, a word problem and you can visualize the right triangle, 
try to use the information given to determine the trig function you can use and use a calculator to help you solve the problems. Good luck. Continue practicing. This will make sense in no time. See you guys later. Bye.